be too much in this message. So, you guys ready? Luke 21. Luke 21. Tap your neighbor, say Luke 21. Luke 21. Roll over to it. Let me pray once again. Let's, let's launch. God, thanks for such an amazing family. Uh, this beautiful family room and all of our extended family online and with technology, we can all get in the same room and, and consider your word. We're, we're looking for truth in this life, truth to stand on, truth to stay steady in such wild times. You didn't leave us on this planet to be blind walking with with no light. You've given us the light of the scriptures and the truth. And so as always, all of our Bible teachers, I pray we just humble ourselves right now. We would decrease, God, you would increase. You would illuminate scripture. You would challenge, encourage. I pray for every single soul listening to this message. All of us together would grow. We'd know you better. We'd understand the truth like never before and help us prepare God, prepare for this, this new season we're entering into. All for your glory in Jesus name, amen, amen. Well, have you ever been deceived, bamboozled, hoodwinked? I like that one. Here's a phrase, have you ever been caught slipping? That's the name of the message, and they actually spelled it wrong. It should be caught slipping with an I-N, kind of like little, like, like little, I don't know what you would call that thing. Apostrophe, is that what it's called, Cap? All right. Anybody? You've been bamboozled. Anybody? You've been, you've been deceived. You've caught slipping. My mom actually uh, almost recently got caught slipping, and she, uh, of course, not my mom, the most beautiful, innocent, just like, and someone, this is a true story, someone had emailed my mom and acting like they were me and saying, saying that she, uh, that they needed some gift cards. And so they wrote an email and they made up literally an email that said like, I don't know, Pastor Todd 1256 sat, you know, with Gmail or whatever. And my mom like was responding to her or to the, her, him, I don't know who, what it was. And then she got a little suspicious and she's like, texted me, she's like, Toddy, did you ask for some gift cards? I was like, come on, mom. And then it's funny, because then I looked at the email, you know? And I'm like, dude, I don't email like that. Like, if you ever get an email, by the way, if you ever get an email, by the way, it wasn't just my mom. There were several people at the church that got an email from Pastor Todd wanting some gift cards. Someone say, don't be caught slipping. <laughs> Come on. It was crazy. And uh, by the way, if you get an email from me, it will, this is just, I'm, my OCD kicks in. They will be punctuated correctly. It'll be spaced properly. Like there won't be typos. You can always know when you're trying to get bamboozled by these people. They have, bat, I love them. Let's pray for them. They're deceived. They're their own self. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. And pray for me when I, if my mom was so close. But praise God, she didn't get bamboozled. Now, on the other hand, right after this happened, <laughs> and I, this is very humbling to tell you, but I'm just gonna tell you because there's a point to this. I don't know what happened, but somehow I got bamboozled into, there was this thing, if you give some crypto, you'll get the double back. <laughs> And this real rich guy want, wanted to push crypto, so if you give a little bit of crypto, he'll give you a double. And just, pray, just extend your hand to me real quick. <laughs> now, the good news is it was just a little bit, and I, and what, but bamboozled. Everybody say bamboozled. Yes, I got hosed, and I lost my crypto. Right after I just told her, I was making fun of my mom. I was like, Mom, I don't email that. And right after, God's like, <laughs> wasn't God, it, by the way. It was something else. You go, I don't know if I should come to this church anymore if my pastor can get bamboozled and deceived and caught slipping. 
caught slipping. Why do I say that? Because as you were reading through with us this week, Jesus told you, he said, don't be deceived. He said, man, before I come back to this planet, there's gonna be all kinds of people trying to deceive you, but don't, don't be deceived. And he said, don't be caught off guard. Did you know, by the way, Jesus will come back? <laughs> Dude, isn't that crazy? I'm like, please, can you just, do, just come back right now? Wouldn't it be great, by the way? I'm just preaching, and all of a sudden, boom, the rapture happens. The Bible talks about there will come a day, and I'll show it to you in here so you don't think, oh, man, what did I get into? It's, it's what the Word of God says. And there's nothing stopping Jesus coming back. It's called the rapture of the church. He will come back just the way he went. He will come back and call his church up, and it'll begin this seven-year time period of chaos on the planet. He will then come back for a thousand-year reign that Satan will be like loose for a little bit, which I still don't understand, and then he'll scrap the whole thing, new heaven, new earth, for all eternity. Now, you read it yourself. Don't take my word for it. And so I wanna just, this is so, this is so cool. Earlier in the chapter, by the way, I'm getting ahead of myself. Earlier in the chapter, the disciples were actually looking at the temple there in Jerusalem, and they were like, dude, Jesus, check it out. This place, this is amazing. And Jesus says, hey, actually, not one stone will be left in this temple. It'll actually be completely dismantled. And sure enough, just 40 years later, not even, in 70 AD, Titus and the Romans, they came and they ransacked Jerusalem. They dismantled the temple, literally just as Jesus had said. And there's a question, though, that the disciples say. They're like, hey, what's gonna be the sign of that happening? And in Matthew, it actually says the sign of the end of the world when you come back. And that's when he says, hey, man, don't be confused. Don't, don't get it twisted. Do not get thrown off. Don't get caught off guard. And so I don't know about you, but I, <laughs> is anybody like looking around what's happening in this world and be like, dude, like it, it, it could happen at any time? Is anybody like, and if you haven't thought that lately, this Bible study is perfect because I really believe there's some very practical things that Jesus responds to his disciples and says, listen, here's some very clear things for you to be, to be aware of and be prepared for before I come back. You guys ready? If you're a note taker, just jot it down. Number one, very, very practical, see the signs. See the signs. There's gonna be some signs that he talks about that will be almost kind of like labor pains. I, one of our friends just had a baby yesterday and then we got, about, see, and, and I heard, now I've never had labor, I've never been in labor before, but I heard, man, they just get like more and more intense. Those, those, those birth pains, they just, ah, and, then you're, and you'll start seeing that, the intensity and the frequency of some of these signs. So, so see the signs. Number two, everybody say, stand strong. Stand strong, jot it down, we're gonna, we're gonna touch on that because here's the thing. There are people right now, you're looking around, and there's Christians right now. We're looking around at all the chaos and we're, 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 we're walking with anxiousness and fear. But can I just tell you, we already know how the story ends and we can stay secure. If you're in Christ, guess what? No weapon formed against you will prosper and you can stand steady in the pocket and your soul can be at peace, even in the midst of all the chaos that's gonna happen. Stand strong. Three, sense the season. And that's where he really gets, <laughs> don't be caught slipping. And I have a bonus one, and I won't give it to you quite yet, because time will tell if I can get to it. But let's start with this, see the signs. It's Luke 21, starting in verse nine. Here's what Jesus says after asked this question, he says, when you hear of wars and insurrections, don't panic. Yes, these things must take place first, but the end won't follow immediately. Write it down real quick. One of the signs of the end times will be wars, global unrest. And like I said, you might be like, well, we've seen wars ever since, you know, I mean, many, 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 many years. 
But I would submit to you the intensity and the frequency of this unrest will continue to get higher and higher as we get closer and closer. I mean, just currently, again, we're in 2024. If you just look at Russia and Ukraine, you look at the Middle East right now and what's going on in the Middle East, again, this is not to freak us out. It is to be able to perk us up. Don't, don't, get, don't get bamboozled. Don't be caught slipping. Don't be falling asleep. Man, this is, is, is birth pangs. We're getting closer and closer to when he comes back. Number two, natural disasters and disease. Look at verse 11. There'll be great earthquakes. There'll be famines and plagues in many lands. And there will be terrifying things and great miraculous signs from heaven. And I don't need to go on and on to give you a really, really basic one that we just went through in COVID. Over 7 million deaths from COVID. You talk about a natural disaster and disease. There was, a, <laughs> there's this quote from this guy. I gotta read this quote from this dude speaking of COVID. Here's what he said. This is Yuval Harari. He's this dude, uh, this, this teacher over in Israel. He says, COVID is what convinced people to accept and to legitimize total biometric surveillance. <laughs> I was like, oh, dude, okay. And he goes on. People could look back in 100 years and identify the coronavirus epidemic as the moment when a new regime of surveillance took over, especially surveillance under the skin, which I think is maybe the most important development of the 21st century. This is this movement, the ability to hack human beings. What? Talk about, everybody say sign. That, that is a sign right there. Verse 25 of Luke 21, there'll be strange signs. There it is, in the sun, moon, and the stars. Here on the earth, the nations will be in turmoil, perplexed by the roaring seas and strange tides. Verse 26 hit me. People will be terrified at what they see coming on the earth. Powers in the heavens will be shaken. But look at this, there's the good news, then everyone will see the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, coming on a cloud with power and great glory. We just talked about the glory of God. There it is right there. So when all these, check it out, church, when all these things begin to happen, watch, stand, look up. Your salvation is near. Oh, I love that. I love that, especially as I get older, man. I, I like get out of bed. Anybody like get that same problem? You kind of get out of bed, you're like, oh. limping to the bathroom. I gotta make it, you know? It's like, <laughs> yes, come quickly, Lord Jesus, man. Like, please, <laughs> let's go. But look, again, I'm just trying to bring biblical truth. You can do whatever you want with it. I'm just trying to do my part to help you prepare for the return of Christ. I'm not making this stuff up. This is true. We know a couple, couple things. There will be an end to this planet and Jesus will come back. It's just bottom line. That's, I'm not making this stuff up. This, let, let me just show you Acts chapter one, verse 11. Jot this stuff down. I love this. And remember the context. Jesus is crucified, resurrected, and then he comes back to the planet for 40 days and hangs out with his homies. And he makes sure he's like just breaking some bread with them and stuff like, proving, I'm alive, guys. I'm alive from the dead. 40 days. And then <laughs> he says, Hey man, wait in Jerusalem till I give you the power of the Holy Spirit and then make disciples, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria to the ends of the world. And then in 11, men of Galilee. And then, wait, and then he bounces. He just goes up to heaven. Wouldn't that be crazy? Like you're just hanging out with Jesus and he's like, hey man, make sure, wait here till I give you the power of the Holy Spirit and then just go. Boo! Just sends it, dude. Like, what? I'd be like, ah. I would love to do that, by the way. Wouldn't that be great? Just see you guys. Just, okay, amen. And then they're all like, wouldn't you be too? Like, okay, he went really high. Is he coming back down? You know, they're like, kind of like. <laughs> and, and then the angel, the, they say, men of Galilee, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven. But someday, everybody say someday. He will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. I didn't say that. The messengers from heaven just said that. The same way that he just, boop, right to the clouds, he's gonna be coming back in the clouds. 
the rapture of the church. Look at, look at this, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. I'm just reading you scripture today. I'm reading you a bunch of scripture because, man, Todd don't have the answers. God does, and he's given to you right here. The Lord, Jesus himself, will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of an archangel, with a trumpet call of God. First, the Christians who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive, you still alive, anybody still alive in here? And remain on the earth will be caught up to the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Doing! That word, if you look at that, that word, caught up, is harpazo. It means to be seized or to be carried off by force, to be snatched away. It's literally what it means. And then it says, then we'll, we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. I came on assignment to encourage you with these words, to encourage me with the word. When you get overwhelmed, you're like, I can't take this world anymore. I'm calling you to be encouraged. He will come back one day and grab you and be like, boop, gone. Someone say good news. That is just, that is great news. Revelation 1, 7 says he comes with the clouds of heaven. Everyone will see him, even those who pierced him. It's a sign. Sign number three, write it down, persecution. Yes. Let's claim the promises of God. If you follow Jesus, you will be persecuted. <laughs> Verse 12, before all this occurs, there'll be a time of great persecution. Be dragged into synagogues and prisons. You'll stand trial before kings and governors because you're my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. I wrote my notes Adversity is actually an opportunity for testimony. Don't worry in advance about how to answer the charges against you. I'll give you the right words and such wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to reply or refute you. And if you just look right back in Jesus' time after he left, talk about persecution. In Acts chapter seven, I can't wait to study the book of Acts with you guys. Acts chapter seven Stephen is literally stoned to death as he gives a testimony about Jesus. With a smile on his face, he gets literally killed, praying for people that are killing him, talking about the love of Jesus. Paul with Felix and Festus and King Agrippa in the book of Acts, you'll see it. Paul is, time and time again, Paul gets like thrown in jail, he gets beaten. I just picture Paul like, sick, dude, another opportunity. What's the opportunity that you have right now? You know, it's interesting. Sometimes when you get to the hospital for a surgery that you didn't really want, maybe it's your mission trip. Maybe it's the mission trip. Maybe there's a nurse or a doctor that, man, they see you in your worst time and you still have peace in your heart and a smile on your face. Maybe your adversity is actually an opportunity for ministry to share a testimony. That's, that is powerful what can happen, persecution. So just, those are just a couple of signs. Everybody say signs. So see the signs. You see them happening. Don't be blind to them. See the signs. But don't get freaked out. Number two, jot it down, stand strong. Everybody just give me just your best flex real quick. Just, come on, just, yeah, no, no one? Okay, thanks, Casey. I got one person. Okay, stand strong, verse 18 but not a hair of your head will perish. Is that? I don't know about that. <laughs> That's really true. But <laughs> where'd it go? <laughs> it just turned colors too. But here it is. Here it is. This is what I wanted you to see. By standing firm, you will win your souls. In the New King Jimmy, I love it. By your patience, possess your souls. Now listen, some of you need to save your souls by giving your life to Jesus. You're not getting to heaven on your good works. You get to heaven because of what Christ has accomplished and our faith in Christ and what he's done. That's really saving your souls, but there's also something about, man, staying steady. Steady in the storm. Steady even though you see the signs. And the best illustration, I was, I was praying about this, and I was like, man, what, what's a good picture? And I just remember, as a quarterback, sorry, this, this we're entering football season. Pat Mahomes, by the way, behind the back. That was ridiculous. I, any event, you can see that. But I remember, I take a snap and I get back in the, this is, it was a, it's called the pocket. 
So you'd have these offensive linemen that would kind of like <laughs> block for you, big old dudes, and they'd block for you. And so I, the, the key for a quarterback is to stay in the pocket, stay steady in the pocket, keep your eyes downfield, because you got enemies coming all around you. But if you had a good offensive line that were blocking for you, you could just stay steady in the pocket. And I started thinking about this, <laughs> and uh, I was thinking about, man, us as a church in this season, can we stay steady in the pocket? And let me just give you, a, I was thinking about this. Um, your left tackle right now is humility. Your left guard is grace. Your center is the truth of the word of God. You got love as your right guard. And how about your right tackle is the sovereignty of God? Woo! When you're steady under his sovereignty, you're immovable. And you can now go back and be like, oh, I got them. They're protecting me, man. I, I, let me move up in the pocket a little bit, move back a little bit. And you could deliver the ball downfield. Here was my problem. I'd be like, oh, this guy can't block. <laughs> Look at my college game tape. I'm running all over the place. Now, a couple of them, they were pretty good. A couple of them, not so good. I started thinking of us Christians. I really don't believe in the grace of God. I'm not in the word of God. I'm not standing in the truth. I'm looking at TikTok and InstaSniff and all these other things. And, that, that, and now I'm like, where am I at? Oh, they're coming after me. Oh, oh, oh. and then I'm running around. And it got me thinking like, dude, it's time for the church to come back to a solid left tackle of grace and love and truth. And the so I don't know why I'm getting out of breath. I'm old and I can't run anymore. There's some, stay strong. Someone say, stay strong. Let me give you a couple of truths. Speaking of your, let me give you a couple of centers. My center in college, Patrick Anoffa, six foot, 365 pounds, and he could dunk a basketball. True story. Let me give you one. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me, you may have peace. Listen, in this world, you will have, you will, you will, but be a good cheer. I have overcome the world. That's good news. You're going to go through it. COVID's going to happen. You're going to have, it was interesting. I think what I've found is in storms, and I've noticed this lately, the storm, what it does, it's revealing the Christian fruit. COVID happens and people are losing their mind. What is that revealing? No shame, no blame. It's, it's, it's revealing your offensive line is really not in place. And so there's this interesting thing that happens where you go, you know what? I got freaked out by that. I got freaked out by this. What is God doing? He's not shame and blaming. He's maturing the church and saying, hey, there's more. In this world, you will have trial. Fear not. I got you, man. I saved you. I, you know where you're going. Stay steady in the pocket. I got another one. You ready for another one? John, uh, 1 John 4, 4. I love this one. You are of God, little children. All my Christian folk up in here, you are of God. And I've overcome them. Look, watch this. Because he who's in you is greater than he who's in the world. <laughs> Kelly, that's, so, that's good news. Isn't that a wild thing? That's why Jesus told his disciples, wait here in Jerusalem until I come upon you and in you and empower you before you go do anything for me. It's the greatest, it's the wildest thing. Do you know, in Christ, when we receive Christ, we receive the very presence and power of God. The Holy Spirit lives in us. That blows my mind. You have God in you. So why, that's why we can stay steady because we go, dang, the enemy is all over. Dude, I'm telling you, evil is lurking. They're trying to jack your crypto and your gift cards. Huh? Evil, but we don't have to trip. No, why? I have the very presence of God in me. That's why we challenge you every morning before you even get out of bed. Here's your prayer. Kill me, fill me, and send me. Kill me, get Todd out of the equation, fill me with your spirit, and then send me 
because there's a lot of people that need your help and God wants to send you on mission and live his life through you to reach the lost. Not make fun of the lost, not judge the lost, but to reach the lost. We're on mission. I love that. I love, love church. You're on mission. You start seeing the signs. Not getting freaked out, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay steady. I'm gonna stay strong. Number three, and we're gonna camp out here for a second. Jot it down, sense the season. So Jesus, again, he's responding to his disciples. Hey, tell us a little bit more about when you come back. What's this gonna look like? How, how can we stay prepared? In verse 29, look at what he says. He's gonna give them an illustration. He says, hey, notice the fig tree or any other tree. When the leaves come out, you know without being told that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene until all these things have taken place. You start seeing this ramp up, this generation is not gonna pass away. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. Never. It's the promises. What you see, what we can touch, it's all gonna disappear, but God's word stays the same. That's so good. He says, you can start seeing it, man. You gotta sense the season. You gotta have some, some discernment. Dis discern the times, man. Don't get your head in the sand. Discern the, now don't get freaked out about it, but be aware of what's happening. In Matthew chapter 24, by the way, the parallel passage that you should go read when you're reading Luke 21 is Matthew 24 because it's, a, it's, a, it's another text of the same message that Jesus is sharing. It's the, this, this Olivet Discourse is what it technically is called. And I wanna read verse 36. I, I like this. He says, however, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. That's so wild. There's a guy that wrote a book, 88 Reasons, in 1988. 88 Reasons Why Jesus is Coming Back in 1988. <laughs> and, and then he, I think he wrote it another, he was a decade off, and then he was like, actually it was 98 Reasons Why Jesus is Coming Back in, in 98. It's actually, if you just read actually Matthew 24, 36, we don't know. But we can have indicators though that the season's near. 37, when the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets, parties, weddings, right up to the time Noah entered the boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. Listen, that is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. That's why we gotta sense the season. As I was studying this, there's so many things and indicators and continual signs, but I jotted down just a couple real quick to give to you for you to go home and study yourself. Number one, jot it down. This is a great indicator that we're closer and closer. Prophecy fulfilled. These are key fulfillments of prophecy. What is prophecy? It is, it is God predicting what's gonna happen in the future. He's kind of showing off, saying, hey guys, this is really me. And one of them he talks about is, is the Jews coming back to Jerusalem. Now think about this. From 70 AD, when Titus and the Romans conquered Jerusalem, until 1948 was when they finally came back and established Israel as a, as a state. That's how long it was. So listen, in our time, that has happened. So Jesus wasn't gonna come back until that was actually established. That's crazy. The other, one of the other key things, if you study Ezekiel 38 and 39, it talks about a coalition of nations that will form and start attacking Jerusalem. And if you look and you study Russian, Iran, Turkey, all that kind of stuff, you compare Ezekiel 37, 38, and 39, it will blow your mind. Do your own study. It's happening. Number two, one world currency. And no one ever thought this was gonna happen. And uh, I just actually heard Busta Cap on one of his, by the way, I love Cap, how you're stewarding 
current events and, and connecting them with the Bible in such a gracious and winsome way. I love that. Um, in Revelation 13, 16, and 17, talks about this thing called the mark of the beast. This is crazy. This is gonna blow your mind. And so when this dude comes back, he's, watch what he's, he's gonna require everyone, verse 16, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on the right hand or on their forehead. No one could buy or sell anything without that mark, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. And for years, yeah, whatever. Now you start looking at stuff. You're like, that could happen at any time. Birth pangs, birth pangs, birth pangs. <laughs> They're happening. Number three, gospel shared worldwide. Matthew 24, 14, the Bible says, the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it. Check this out. And then the end will come. And again, you think, just in our lifetime, the ability for everybody to hear the gospel has radically changed. My man KB, just last night, he said, bro, did you know there's more cell phones than there are toothbrushes in the world? And then I just started thinking, in my travels to India and to Colombia and Guatemala and everywhere, I see people that have no home, but they're on the street, but you know what they do have? Cell phone. When you study the book of Revelation, oh, geez. write it down. It's actually found in chapter 11. I don't, I don't want to read it. I'm, let me just give you the, the, the gist of it. During the tribulation, again, don't take my word for it. Go study Re Revelation 11. I think it's 9 through 11. It tells a story about during the tribulation, after Jesus has come back, chaos ensues. There's going to be two witnesses that come and share the gospel. People are going to get fed up. They're going to kill them in front of everybody, in front of the whole world. They're gonna be dead three days and then they're gonna resurrect in front of the whole world on live TV. <laughs> Didn't say that. And when you read that, you're like, if I was in 1940 or 60 or 80, I'd be like, ah, satellite TV maybe. Today? What is this? Not to freak you out, this is birth pangs. This is awareness. This is, hey, something shifting in our world and we gotta be ready. And I'm so glad I was efficient with our points because I was gonna give you a bonus point. And actually, Jesus wanted to give you a bonus point. You guys ready? Jot it down. Number four, stay sober. Stay sober. Verse 34, Luke 21, 34. Watch out. Don't get hoodwinked. Watch out, don't get deceived, bamboozled. Watch this, this is interesting because I think this might be the most efficient way for the enemy or my flesh to get me off track and bamboozled when it comes to the return of Christ. Here it is. Don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness. Well, I'm not getting drunk, but by the worries of this life, there you go. Don't let that day catch you unaware like a trap. Don't be caught slipping. There it is right there. For that day will come upon everyone living on the earth. And here it is. Keep alert at all times. Tap your neighbor. Just wake them up. Say, stay alert. Stay alert. Stay sober at all times. And pray that you might be strong enough to escape these coming horrors and stand before the Son of Man. Stay sober. Stay ready. I like what Mike said, stay ready, so you ain't gotta get ready. First Peter 5, 8, this is where I got this idea. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The great picture is when, uh, in Judges chapter seven, when Gideon was forming his army, when God was telling Gideon of forming his army, he had all these troops and they did like this selection on who was really gonna roll with them. And so he, he, he's like, hey, tell those, those dudes to go and drink water. And everybody, everybody was like, everybody was like, except there was 300 dudes. They're like, 
there was 300. And God told Gideon, take those homies. Why? They're alert. They see what's up. <laughs> Their head was up. That's what he's looking for. Right now, we got a lot, and I'm included. I'm worried about my own things, about the cares and riches of this life, about the tangible things that I can see. Jesus talks about in the parable of the soil, he's like, man, you know what, you know, you know what that lifestyle is? It's the one that first, like, the seed goes out, it starts growing, but then it gets choked out by, by the thorns and the worries of this life. He said, no, 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 no. Very clearly, be sober, be vigilant. Don't be concerned about what to eat, what to drink, what to wear. In Luke 12, 30, it says, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world, but your father already knows your needs. And here's some simple word for you, you ready? 31, seek the kingdom of God above all else and he'll give you everything you need. Oh my goodness. Is that just good news today? Now, I apologize. I, I was like a machine gun today. I got a little excited. Here, here's, my, here's my practical action that I would lovingly encourage you to take. Take some time this week and just study the scriptures on your own. I gave you some of the references. I had to cruise by them because of time. If you wanna stay ready so you don't gotta get ready, just take your own time Pause, read the scriptures, ask the Lord to speak to you. Don't get freaked out. Stay steady in the pocket. This is not to freak you out. It is to awaken us as a church to have a smile on our face, to stay steady in the pocket, to keep our eyes on the prize, Jesus Christ. And if he comes back tomorrow or 100 years from now, guess what? We're all gonna be ready. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Love this word. Love this challenge. And I just love how you're, you're awakening a church right now. You're opening our eyes. I know you're doing it for me. I'm like, Todd, man, you, you, you are so focused on the temporal. Nothing wrong with some of the things you're able to enjoy, but man, keep your eyes up. Eternal things. Souls at stake. My people that I want you to reach with your with love and grace and truth, sharing, trusting me to do the work. So God, we, we do. We just say yes and amen to all you're gonna do over these next weeks and months. I pray we'd stay humble through the whole process in Jesus' name.